welcome to Ukraine Today in Warsaw to talk about presidential election in Belarus and possible lifting of sanctions against Belarus and Lukashenko. Ukraine Today is joined by Wojciech Kanonczyk, the head of department for Ukraine, Moldova and Belarus of the Center of Eastern Studies. Mr. Kanonczyk, thank you for coming. European officials and international observers noted that these elections were not democratic but more democratic than the previous one. How do you estimate these elections as an expert on this subject? Uh, there is no doubt that uh, Belarusian uh, presidential elections were, were neither uh, free nor fair. And I think that we will see uh, this conclusion in the report of OSC who monitored the, the election day. Uh, there is some slight progress, but nevertheless, uh, it seems that these this this, this elections were not democratic. So uh, actually, the, the situation in, in Belarus uh, is actually the same as it was 5 or 10 or 15 years ago. What does it mean for Belarusians? It means that the authoritarian system is still strong, that the opposition is, uh, is very weak, and there, there, there is no any actors on the Belarusian political scene who can challenge uh, President uh, Lukashenko. Otherwise, you lift sanctions against Belarus and personally Lukashenko, but what is the reason why Europe is ready to close eyes to these violations? There are discussions about lifting the sanctions. Uh, very recently, the EU, just after the, 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 the elections in Belarus, the, the EU decided to postpone the sanctions for four months. So we see that there is a will on the, on the, on the EU side to, to start a, a dialogue with, with Minsk. Uh, but uh, I think that at the, at the beginning it will be a dialogue on a, on a low basis. Uh, it will apply mainly to the question of uh, economic cooperation. Uh, and you know, there is still a question about what is the EU aim in regards to Belarus. Are, do we, do we uh, have an ambition to change step by step the, the regime uh, in Minsk, or our ambitions are rather minor, mainly, uh, mainly uh, they are in regards to the question of economic cooperation. Why did you choose this period of time for lifting sanctions? Uh, I think uh, because of the elections, of course. Uh, so uh, there were some, uh, let's say, uh, expectations from the EU side uh, to President Lukashenko. It is mainly uh, not to use uh, mass repression as it was five years ago after the uh, ele presidential elections. Uh, and it, it was um, the demand actually to him to release uh, political prisoners, what he actually did uh, in the end of August. Um, he should also rehabilitate the, 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 the prisoners, but he didn't do it. So uh, some uh, very, basis, ba very basic uh, expectations or demands fr from the EU to, 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 to Minsk uh, were actually fulfilled. Does the West believe that Lukashenko has become a different person, some kind of kind of dictator? I don't think so. I think that uh, what the, the last elections and this small, very small progress we are observing, uh, it uh, does not change the nature of his regime. The regime is actually the same. And uh, even more, I, I would say that there is no a will uh, to change uh, the regime. Uh, what B Belarus actually badly needs are democratic uh, reforms and economic reforms, structural reforms, yes? Um, Belarus faces uh, deep economic crisis, uh, but we don't see that, uh, we don't see a will of, of President Lukashenko to change the system uh, from inside. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the logic of how the authoritarian system works says us that uh, he's not ready for any uh, deep changes in the system. What could Lukashenko get personally after lifting of sanctions? Uh, Lukashenko is interested in uh, at least three points. Uh, he would like the EU uh, to lift the sanctions. He would like to have more uh, investment from the West to the Belarusian economy. And he's interested in a, in a loan from some Western financial institutions like the IMF mainly. Uh, so uh, his uh, goals towards the West are rather economic. Uh, at the same time, uh, he, um, 
he's not interested in any kind of uh, deep economic and political reforms. On the on the on the hand of uh, of, the, of the EU, uh, we think that uh, there is a deadlock in Western or European uh, Belarusian relations, and we have to try to try to change it. Right? It's a perception from the EU, but we have to ask ourselves a question: if it is possible to deal with uh, such a dicta di dictator like like Lukashenko, is he a person who is able to change or not? Uh, my personal opinion is that he, uh, he, doesn't, ha he doesn't have any will to, uh, to, to change itself, himself. And we, don't, we, don't, we, don't sh we, sh we shouldn't be naive. Uh, we should realistically uh, see uh, the, the, the real picture of, of, of situation in Belarus. Uh, because Lukashenko would like to use our naivety. Uh, uh, I, would, I would put it uh, um, this way, that uh, he thinks that we are so naive that he will be able to cheat us again, as, as he did it before the uh, presidential election, election in 2010. So uh, we should realistically, again, realistically uh, see the, the whole picture of, of situation in Belarus. Do you see the willingness of Lukashenko to get rid of Russian influence? I think he is interested in, uh, in finding some balance between uh, very strong Russian influence and uh, uh, no influence from, actually from the West. So uh, he would like to, to have a, a room for some maneuver in his foreign policy. But at the same time, uh, I think that he pretty understands that the level of, of Russian influence in economy, but also military spheres, are so strong that uh, he actually cannot do anything with, with, with this. He, again, he, he tried to find some balance, but it would be very difficult to, to find this balance. So do you mean that deploying of Russian military base in Belarus is just a question of time? Actually, the, the agreement about uh, Russian uh, air base was signed three years ago. So uh, now it's uh, up to Russian uh, to, you know, to establish the, the air base. Um, I know that before the, uh, before the elections, Lukashenko said that, you know, uh, it, 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 it surprised me because I, I don't know anything about uh, any Russian plans to establish uh, a new base in, on, on Belarusian territory. But, you know, it's rather uh, quite a funny statement uh, because he's, of course, very well informed. And uh, if Russia decides that they need, uh, they need a, a base, a new base in Belarus, there will be a, a Russian base in Belarus. Do you think that all of this is a new strategy of Lukashenko to keep his high post as much as possible? Uh, I think that uh, actually nothing, uh, nothing uh, will change. Uh, it will be the same old Lukashenko and it will be the same old regime. So uh, I think that we, shouldn't be, we should not expect any, uh, any reforms, uh, any, any you know, uh, uh, deep, deep, uh, deep changes in, 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 Belarus, in Belarus. There will be an attempt to imitate some, some modernization, uh, but it would be, be just an imitation. Mr. Kononchuk, thank you for finding time to talk to us. Thank you. I'm Margrita Sitnik from Warsaw, together with Wojciech Kononchuk, the head of Department for Ukraine, Moldova and Belarus of the Center for Eastern Studies.